Hello and welcome back to Matt's Automotive Channel. This is part three of the video series in which we are currently tearing down a 97 Mustang Cobra engine. We've found a number of issues with this engine so far. And in this video, we're gonna go ahead and continue tearing it down to find out what other issues that we may need to deal with. If you're interested in following this video series, please check out the playlist 97 Mustang Cobra. With that said, let's get started. Okay, at this point, uh, we have the heads off. We do have some uh, water damage in here. It ended up uh, creating some rust on the inside of the cylinder walls. I have uh, since I've removed the head, I have used a scour pad and uh, tried to clean up some of this rust. But as I rub my nail over it, I can feel these protrusions here. So uh, some of this material has been eaten away. It's very likely that uh, we're gonna have to have the machine shop uh, bore these cylinders out. But uh, still at this point, uh, because of this rust, the uh, Piston rings have rusted themselves to the cylinder wall and the engine is currently locked. It will not turn. I did put some penetrative oil in each of these cylinders and let them sit overnight in hopes that a, I could free this thing up, but uh, still no luck. So I think we're just going to have to start tearing down the bottom part of the motor and uh, get the crankshaft out of there and uh, maybe we can go ahead and tap these things out individually. Um, that's kind of looking like the approach we're going to need to take at this point. And uh, here's what the uh, bottom of the heads look like, where the valves are. Uh, <laughs> you can see, not looking so great. Um, definitely going to have to pull these heads apart and get the valves out and clean everything up. And uh, then we'll assess uh, what we need to do at that point once everything's torn down. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. All right, you can see here, this motor is still locked up. Pretty good, I just can't spin this. If I apply more force, I'm afraid I'm gonna break something. Try to spin it the other way. <clears throat> There's just no way that that's gonna turn. Okay, so flip the motor over. Let's go ahead and get this oil pan off and see what it looks like in here. All right, uh, so we'll go ahead and try to get as many of these um, connecting rods unbolted as possible. Um, the one that's stuck really bad is cylinder number three, which is this guy here. And fortunately, it looks like we have good access uh, to these bolt heads. Uh, not so good access on the others, like uh, number one, looks like it'll be pretty difficult to get to. and. Uh, number five that'd be really difficult but anyway uh, let's go ahead and pull this off and see if we can't get any movement in the crank actually the bearing looks to be in good shape with that one cap removed let's see if we can spin this at all oh yeah easy yeah, it's definitely that one cylinder is the problem. Okay, so let's tap it with the rubber mallet and see if we can get any movement on this thing. Wow, that is really stuck in there. I'm not seeing any movement. All right, I tapped on it a little more and I think it budged a little bit. So I'm gonna put the uh, crank back down onto that uh, connecting rod and then see if we can push it out a bit. There we go. Let's flip it over and see if we can get any movement. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I know it moved down a bit and I think I just pushed it right back up. So apparently there's a ridge right around here that it's catching on. Okay, I did get some movement on it. I uh, was actually able to tap it in about a quarter of an inch. However, when I try to push it back out, it gets hung up. So, I think the uh, plan of attack here is to remove all the uh, all the pistons, except for the one that's stuck, obviously, and uh, pull the crank out, and then uh, try to tap it through uh, once all this stuff is out of the way. So, let's give that a shot. 
Okay, before removing any of these uh, pistons, I'm gonna go ahead and label them so we can put them back into the same cylinders that they came out of. Okay, so the numbering convention on these Ford motors is uh, to start on the uh, passenger side, which is the most forward uh, piston, and then one, two, three, four, and then go to the other side, five, six, seven, eight. Um, different on different motors, like I know, for instance, the Subaru, uh, they're numbered alternately because they are basically just looking at the sequence in which they go back. So if you look at this real close, you can tell that this is the most forward. This would be number two, three, four, five. So if this was a Subaru, it would be uh, numbered that way. But being a Ford, we got it numbered this way. Okay, so we got all the pistons numbered. So let's go ahead and flip it over and we'll start moving whatever we can. And real important, you want to make sure that the uh, caps uh, stay with the particular pistons because these things are, they're actually a solid piece when they're manufactured and then they're cracked. And so let me show you a little closer here. You'll see that that's not nice and uniform. It's kind of ragged and it's supposed to be that way because they actually fit better together when they're like that. So it's very important that this cap stay with this rod. So we'll just screw them back together and keep them, keep them together that way. Okay, fortunately these others are not rusted in so much that the pistons don't slide in and out easy. So. There we go. There, another one out. Number seven. All right, number five is being a little stubborn, so I put the cap back on and I just try tapping it out now. All right, looks like that's working just fine. There we go. Okay, I put the uh, cap back on the end of that rod and I'm trying to tap it out. It does not want to budge. Like I'm finally getting some movement here. All right, I flipped the motor over and we'll try going the other direction now. Okay, even though I can, uh, I freed up the piston a little bit, I just cannot hammer it out. It gets stuck back into that same position. So there's probably some ridge. And also with this crank in here, I can't go 90 degrees. And I think that's part of the problem too. So anyway, what we're gonna do now is remove the uh, crankshaft. So we'll start by pulling off this rear end cap here. Okay, we have all the bolts out, so let's go ahead and just remove this cap. Okay, now that we have the plate off, it uh, goes around the rear main seal. We just need to go to the front of the motor and pull the oil pump off. And then um, we'll pull off the caps here for the uh, crankshaft and we should be able to lift it out. Okay, let's go ahead and get this oil pump off. There we go. Okay, now we have all the caps loose, so we can go ahead and zip these off. Okay, now that we have all the top bolts off, there are some going in from the side, as you can see here. So we'll go ahead and pull all those off next, and then we should be able to lift these things out.
All right, now we have access to the side bolt. Okay, now after pulling out these side bolts, we need to um, loosen these set screws here. These are a 3 8 inch Allen, and all you need to do is just go in here and loosen these. There's no need to pull them all the way out. All right, this end one's a little trickier because of this uh, ledge here, you can't get the thing in and turn it, so you gotta go in the length lengthwise here, and then just put a wrench or something on the end to get the leverage and then just twist it out. Okay, now we have everything loosened. Um, these caps need to go back where they came from, so I went ahead and labeled them from the front of the motor. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, now with everything loosened, we should be able to just pull those out. Also, the orientation of this matters too, but there's a little triangle here that shows you that the arrow there points towards the front of the motor. Now that we have all the main bearing caps out of the way, we should be able to just lift the crank out of the motor. And there we go. Okay, now this gives us a very direct shot, so we should be able to pound this thing out now. Okay, I believe we're making a little bit of progress right now. Okay, I'm starting to make some pretty good progress here now. Uh, my worry was that once I get this, pound this through on the last hit or last blow, that the piston would go flying out and then hit the ground there and break the piston. So I ran this little uh, bungee cord uh, through the connecting rod here, so it'll capture it once it goes all the way out. Captured it just fine. Now let's roll the motor back over. And take the bungee off. That is really in there. There we go. Wow. And yeah, if we look at this, um, you can see that the uh, piston rings are still jammed in uh, between the uh, piston grooves here and they're not allowed to expand. So yeah, this whole thing just kind of rusted together. Hopefully the cylinder wall is uh, okay. Um, although I have a feeling we're gonna be taking it to a machine shop and boring it out. Okay, so now that all the pistons are out, we can take a look at these cylinders here. Definitely a little bit of rust in all of them. And of course, the uh, number three cylinder here is by far the worst. But they all definitely need uh, need some work, that's for sure. And I did measure uh, the inner bore of these cylinders uh, from the factory. They're 3.55 inches in diameter, and they still are, which tells me that these have not been bored out before. So it should be no problem taken a few thousandths off and uh, oversized these uh, cylinders. All right, I wanted to see if these uh, cylinder walls clean up at all with this uh, flex zone. So, give this a shot and see what, what it does. Absolutely amazed. You won't believe this. I don't see any more um, pits or scoring or rust or anything in there. It looks perfectly good. Uh, of course, I'm going to need to take measurements to make sure that uh, you know some of that metal has not been eaten away. But holy smokes, that cleaned up well. That's just absolutely amazing. This was the bad cylinder.
Um, when you do this, you want to go at a rate in which you get about a 45 degree crosshatch. So you don't want to run the drill real fast. It's kind of slow. They move it up and down about as fast as the outer portion of that is, uh, the horn is turning. These are looking great. As you can see, we've got about a 45 degree angle there for the cross hatching. Looking great. I think we may have saved ourselves a trip to the machine shop. And then again, there was the bad cylinder. So anyway, we'll uh, go ahead and take some measurements and stay, make sure that we're still at 3.55 inches all the way. We'll take uh, three measurements, one near the top, middle and bottom. Um, 90 degrees of each other so a total of six measurements in each of the cylinders to make sure that they're round and uh, not tapered i was taking a quick look at all the pistons and uh, i think most of them are in pretty good shape i mean you can see that the uh, rings still move freely about in all of these except for that one uh, piston number three i don't know if this piston will be salvageable um, maybe we can uh, work our, maybe we can work the uh, rings out of there and get some new rings and put them in. In fact, if we do that, we'll get a new ring set and then put them in, new rings in all the pistons. Um, but I'm not sure if that's salvageable. We may have to get another piston. Actually, actually upon closer examination here, um, some of these other pistons are not as great. I mean, you can see the, the good ones, there's a lot of uh, freedom there, um, but there's, Let's see, we got the really bad one. Uh, we got, what, this was number five. It looks like that compression ring is kind of wedged in there and not expanding. And also with uh, piston number two. All right, uh, just for info, even though it looked like <clears throat> most of the rust and the pits that were in the cylinders had completely disappeared, I couldn't visually see them, but I could feel them when I dragged my fingernail over it. So I took some thousand grit uh, sandpaper um, lubricate it a little bit with WD-40 and then went through each of these uh, cylinders because I want to get to the point where I can't feel anything and even on these other ones I can still feel a little bit so uh, anyway I'm going to sand this down just like ever so slightly and uh, maybe then go to a 2500 uh, grit paper and kind of polish them up and then I'll re-hone them and then I think we should be pretty good to go the thing is, if you can feel a physical abnormality, um, obviously the gases are going to get past that uh, seal. So it needs to be perfectly smooth, uh, not only visually, but uh, to touch. You should not be able to detect anything. So we're just about there. This this was the bad cylinder here. And uh, yeah, I run my fingernail through there and I really don't feel any, any abnormalities or any additional roughness or resistance. It feels pretty good. So, uh, yeah, we'll take measurement, clean this all up, rehone it, and then take some measurements. But I have a feeling that this is going to be pretty good the way it is. Okay, just so you know, I did also use another type of hone. I used this type with the, uh, the flat spots on it. Um, reason being, um, if there's any uh, abnormalities, um, you know, since this is nice and straight, it'll tend to make those uh, stick out and show up. And like if there's a little pit or something, it'll show up really well using this type of uh, hone. And instead of the uh, flex hone like this, because this tends to just kind of fill in all the areas. Uh, whereas this one, just nice and straight. And uh, I tell you, after using that and the uh, thousand grit sandpaper, uh, this is just perfect. Thanks for joining me this video. I'm going to call it quits here. On the next one, we'll go ahead and see if we can salvage those pistons. We'll take some measurements on the block and also uh, evaluate the heads and probably start tearing those down as well. So anyway, uh, if you like this uh, video, please again, uh, go ahead, like, subscribe, and uh, click on the notification bell to be reminded of videos moving forward. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.